Do you blame somebody? Because if you start putting blame out there on that situation, then you're already taking away whatever love you have and making it into something else, and you're going to lose a lot more of it. But now, if your partner, mate, husband or wife leaves you, is that easy to deal with? Any easier? Of course not. What do you do? Well, me personally, get angry, get mad. But do you get even? Well, I'm going to go through a couple of scenarios real fast. I try to go through them a little bit faster. In my life, I went through serious relationship problems to the point where I said, well, I'll kill you. So, uh, did that take me out of love? Of course it did. Did it fill me with compassion? No. It filled me with all the opposites. Did I go through with the threats and ideas and things? Well, a few times, I almost did. Luckily, certain events happened around it that stopped it from happening. Uh, I don't know if you want to hear the story, that kind of a story or not. I don't know if it entertains people or not. I just know it was part of my life and it was horrible. But then again, people like to see horrible things. Oh, it's happening to them. At least it didn't happen to me. Or did it? Well, I was in a relationship, got married. And suddenly there was a person in her life who walked into my house. He said some things to me which really got me angry. Because he's in my house now. And I kind of would say he lost it. I went into our house. We, we moved into a two-family house. Well, it was a one-family house, really split into a two-family house where my wife and I was living. So we split. But in that split, I came in the house. This guy's there. He goes, give me the keys back to the house. Right? And he goes, I treat you, treat her like sugar. And it was just everything to drive me over the wall. So I went into our apartment, which is still part of the house, kicked over the table, took this big glass mug and smashed it on the side so I had the handle in my hand. In that moment, I really said, I'm going to chop this person up. And then when I came back out, he was already running up the block. And then my wife at the time said, oh, you'll never see him again. I said, well, that is really good, because if I do, he will never be here again. Uh, but that only built more anger. Because now I'm losing my wife, losing my home, for a situation uh, because somebody wasn't willing to give the 100% in a relationship to make it work. So the 100% mark is not 50-50, 60-40. Those numbers do not work. It's because it's these little things like, and, and not everybody's totally open about what happened in their lives, so want to be. But when here and there they pop out, they can't be taken back. Meaning, you could be with somebody that lied to you half of your life, or told you a story that wasn't real about her life, or what they do, or what they did, those kind of things. Can you deal with it? Can you forgive and forget? I mean, that's well, some people do, you just got to forgive and forget. Your subconscious mind latches onto a program and it keeps it. So if you say, well, I'm going to just forgive and forget, it's still there. And until the subconscious mind can work it out, it will always be there. So, with that scenario, what do you do now? Well, it was a long time. It took me a year and a half to battle through that. Still trying to talk to her, still trying to hold on. Not that I 
felt that I did anything wrong, but somebody always said, well, this takes two to start a fight. No, it takes one person to start a fight. Somebody walks in and whap back to you on the head. Did you start that? No. So, the ideas that we, we, we put into a scenario of relationships and what we get out of it are man created to protect themselves, their ego. How do we change that? Easy. Being honest, being real, being truthful. If the relationship's not there, don't try to make it there. If all these things are out of place that you can't deal with, it's not going to be easy to say, well, I just won't watch, I won't listen, I won't blah, blah, blah. No, it doesn't work like that. Love is 24 hours every second day and night. It doesn't stop anywhere in between today and tomorrow. To let go, well, you can always say, well, this is life and it's going to end and I'll be able to move on. Yes. Now, I'm going to take that back to the other scenario I put out there a while ago. What do most people do in their daily life? How many people drink at least one drink a week or one drink a day? For what reason? To relax. Well, I'm sure if you did a heavy workout, sitting in the tub relaxes the body. Drinking a beer relaxes what? The subconscious mind? Or the mind itself? Getting back to look in the mirror, I'm going to try to keep this all together. When you look in the mirror, you're looking at you on the outer and you on the inner as well. Because so you all have to work together. Alright. So... When we uh, do that, I mean, there's there's some good people in the world. But you know how hard it is for a woman to find it, especially if she has her already created scenarios of what she wants. Uh, I watch couples like you know how they compare a, a person to their dog and say they look alike and things like that. Uh, look at a couple; do they fit together? Sometimes you say no, and and this is truthful about football basketball players they usually have small wives not because they're tall and they're usually smaller than the average height of an average person and ego has a lot to do with it power uh, strength goes with that so when a person is super big they're going to want full control, even though they're big and they should assume that they have it over anybody no matter what. They have to have somebody a little bit smaller so they can control it even more. I don't know why. I see it all the time. And I watch that. Uh, the same as sometimes big women have to have little guys around them. So it's a scenario of the created idea how we're going to build love in our relationship in my life. Right, wrong, or indifferent, it doesn't matter. It's what you do and feed it to create it. Now, when we talk about relationships, how much abuse goes on in any relationship? I'm not just talking about just yelling, fighting, and things like that. How much more abuse goes into it? The lies and the cheating and all those little other words that never get brought into it even though they're there. I worked for the phone company 20 years. I always got into conversations. Sometimes I had to ride with a guy all day and work with him. And when they do that, they usually put two people in a truck and stuff like that. But it's funny. Every uh, 90%, no, let's make it 95% of every man I ever talked to was always that person that said, well, if I had the chance to cheat and nobody knew about it, I would do it. Scenario, they do. And that's the only reason why they're admitting it. Now, one person I had, I truly saw he was in love with his wife. And that's all that mattered to him, no matter what. And if you commit to a relationship, that's the way it should be. Otherwise, you don't need to be in a relationship. Now, I'm going to bring something weird into this to 
uh, in the next hour. But as we play the game of love and life, are we doing what we should be doing within it? Are we being the best we can to the parties involved within it? We need to say yes. Uh, we're coming up on the hour. At the hour, I'm going to take a break, and I'm going to try to call TJ just to see if she's okay, if she can even get in on the last half hour, hour. Uh, but call them with your questions. I mean, some people are willing to put their questions out there, and that's glad. I'm glad they are. Uh, think about that. In this, say, the next three months, is love in your life, you want it in your life, what would you do to bring it into your life more, change it, and all those little things. What could you change about yourself to make yourself a little bit more likable, lovable, and all those scenarios. Uh, if you have a, a style that you know is out of date, some women like long hair, some people, most women don't. I mean, all those scenarios determine how fast or how easy it's going to make what you're looking for happen. And you need to be aware of that. Well, I'm, I'm a nice person, so they're going to love me no matter what. Really? If you can say that so much about yourself, what makes makes you believe that? So it's not it's it's not easy. Uh, next to truth, love is the secondary word that needs to be understood. Because so far I mentioned love. I mean the uh, I talked about the physical love, the self love, the unconditional love. And then there is the most important one. Not love of your wife, not love of a dog, but love of God. And that's even more complicated because if you don't know God, how do you love it? Saying words don't make anything. Words are just words. How do you know you love God? Do you know anything about God to love? If you believe a programmed idea, meaning it's, or he, they like the word he, uh, is protective, loving, giving, and all that. To who? To the 94% of the planet that's starving and homeless? Or to the 3% that's super rich? They don't fit together. None of the ideas that we create or work with relate to the idea of what love truly is. When you pertain and bring it back to God. Money can't be in the picture. Ego can't be in the picture either. Truth and awareness are the most active things that have to be active in your mind when you learn to perceive that and understand it. So what I'm going to do, uh, if you need to get a drink of water, whatever, uh, take a few short, close your eyes a second, and dream on. I'll be right back. Some of them want to get used 
Bye.